Okay, so for unit 10, chapter 12, this is looking for a misplaced item. That's really the content of the story, but the unit itself is looking at how we frame questions and how um, we sort of uh, add extras to stories, add details, um, making stories a bit more consistent and making them clearer. So, um, So first of all, uh, one of the goals of the chapter, goal, is to look at this structure for a narrative story. First, giving the background, so why you're doing something, why you're signing the book. What was the motivation? Excuse me. Whew, a little too much ginger ale. And then within that, the, um, the body of the story um, and the searches. In this one, she's um, lost a sandwich that she bought for lunch. And so she's looking around the house for where she may have misplaced it. Uh, again, I point out that three searches is a good number. We like threes. So I would say always go for three of any example. And that's a good number to show. If you can't come up with three, that's fine. If there are only two, that's great. One isn't much of an example. Okay. And then the discovery process, oh my gosh, I found it. And then how do you feel afterwards? That's a pretty typical um, structure for most personal stories, right? If you think about anecdotes you tell about your life, those kind of happen to be, oh, here's, here's how I got to where I was, status quo, right? And then here's the problem, um, and I tried to solve it, and then I solved it, how did I feel afterwards? Classic story structure, right? Uh, introduction, rising action, climax, denouement, and then new status quo. Um, so we're looking at pretty classic story structure. So that's how you want to start thinking about that. Then um, here are the skills in each section. How do you explain why this is happening, why this action is going on, the rationale for your search? She loses her sandwich why is she looking for it? Because she's hungry or, um, you know, whatever. Why is Hamlet trying to figure out who killed his dad? Because the ghost came and talked to him. I need to move something because uh, I am in darkness on this side. Okay. I'm in trouble seeing that. Okay, that's better. Sorry. Um, other skill to be thinking about is spatial agreement. Now that we're setting up environments, we want to make sure we're always consistent. Um, we don't want to like set my cup here, and then when I reach for it, I pick it up from here. Because in the eyes of the audience, I just grabbed a different cup. And that's a weird thing to get used to. We don't do that. Um, we don't do that in spoken English. Maybe voice-wise, have you ever listened to someone and the like an audiobook and in one chapter, the voice they do for one character is one way, and then in the next chapter, the voice they do for that same character is different, and it throws you off. It's kind of that same idea. I had a student one time who was talking about um, a parking meter, and set it up right here, and then it was one of the ones that uses um, credit card, credit card. So took out and then did this. Set up the parking meter here, but then put his fist through the parking meter to pay it. It's a little thing that we don't notice, um, but it can really throw you off. If you were watching something go, that's weird. Kind of like playing some uh, Assassin's Creed games or Fallout or something like that, where all of a sudden a person's through a table and you're like, that doesn't look, that's weird. Okay, or you see the inside of a face. Um, so we wanna make sure that the spatial um, all the things we sign, everything we set up in space and manipulate agrees that everything coincides and keeps the picture con consistent. Um, word order, oh, name object before describing how you would use it. Okay. Um, word order. We always set up and define something before we manipulate it. That's how basic classifiers work. So if I say my car, then I can use the car. I wouldn't just go, my car. Because we don't know what this is. It could be anything. It could be a sub. 
going back and forth under the water. And then it would say, oh, it's my car. And the person's gonna go back and fix all that information. So you always set it up first, then explain it. So, um, So I set up the door over there and then I went. So I set up who I am and where I'm going. Okay, so that's word order, idea order. What order of information do we have to have so that it's clear? Role shifting. We're starting to now do conversations. And as we've done individually with this online stuff, um, we're now gonna do it portraying other characters. So I come up and I'm talking with someone and they go, oh, how are you? So role shifting. Now we're starting to incorporate um, role playing to keep class exciting. Um, and then concluding the search, looking, 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 found none. Sandwich, none. So if your quest is fruitless, um, uh, oh, couldn't any kind of negative, or um, it could be a positive end. So contact him finally. So there's some kind of um, success or failure. Um, in this story, it's a, it's a failure. So it'll be a little bit easier to, to define. New vocab. There's only these four concepts. It occurred to me. I had a thought. There's lots of different, um, since signing naturally wants to give you not one word, they want to give you a phrase, feel free to come up with other phrases that, um, that fit the bill. So watch the video that they show of it and say, hmm, okay, it could also mean this, it could also mean this, it could also be this. Two can play at that game, signing naturally. I'll show you. So it occurred to me. I had a thought, um, then it hit me, how have you heard it phrased in other media? So it occurred to me, boom, I had a thought, right? So we don't think, I, oh, I think, thinking about, the, you know, it appeared. Someone struck me with a dart. Um, not there, not present. None, have none, saw none, none, looked, none. So it depends on the situation. In this, right, um, to feel annoyed after realizing you should have known better. There's lots of different ones. Um, in, in this case, because I find myself not, I don't sign, oh, I was disgusted with myself. Um, <laughs> my family are like, ah. um, bit, bit Sicilian on that side. Um, uh, and I, I will post uh, a separate vocab review. And then to feel foolish or stupid. You'll also see this, the sign for dumb or stupid is like this. If you really want to emphasize, um, you don't want to really whack yourself because then you'll forget about like, sixth grade um, if you hit yourself too hard. So what we do is we use um, your passive hand as a stand-in for your head. So you go, oh, so dumb, stupid. Depends on how much emphasis you want to put. But you don't even have to make contact with stupid. Um, oh, I'm a bonehead. Um, or pea brain. And this is for like, ah, oh, mocking myself. This tends to be a little bit more, oh my God, I'm so dumb. We all have those moments where like, oh, I can't believe I did that. Um, okay, so that's really the new vocab that gets used in this story. So next, um, and I spell this all out, so I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this, because um, I put the time into the, the um, slides. But I want you to think not about the answer to this question, how would you sign this question? So for example, where did the woman go and what did she buy? Now, first off, 
notice that there are two questions in there. So in ASL, you're going to want to split those up. Don't try to cram them into one, especially because there are two WH questions, right? Where and what. So separate those two out. Make two simple questions. ASL does that. Long, long narrative passages, long things of any kind will be a series of shorter chunks linked together. So start out by approaching that. Oh, there's two questions. Forget the and. Give me two questions, right? Each one ends with a WH question. So we know that from structure. So where did the woman go? We don't have time. The location is the destination. That's the question. So we don't have one to set up. The subject, the person who's doing the actions, the woman. And because we're going to be talking about her in the story, index her. Start getting used to indexing when you set up something like the store over there, woman over here. So your natural impulse is to set that up. So it's a good plan because if you just say woman, go where? There's a piece missing. Woman, go where? So woman, her, go where? Okay. And then another question, eyebrows go up as a transition by what okay by right because she's still the subject we don't we can set her up again she by what um throughout this whole thing we're always using the same subject that woman sometimes we can we can set her up every time sometimes it gets a bit redundant and we're like we know who you're talking about um, if other characters come in later you might need to refocus on her so just know that those are it's optional whether you mention her again. So I would practice it both ways so you feel comfortable. So woman, her, go where? By what? Um, so boom. Now remember, glossing also is not written ASL. It's simply a code to show order of information. It's more like cue cards or, um, you know, the GPS, your Google Maps isn't taking you there. It's just the steps you need to do to get there. So that's the way I want you to think about glossing. Um, I did IX because most texts, this one uses IX as indexing, pointing towards, using your index finger. Okay. So woman there, go where? And there's no set things. Putting a comma to show that's at the end of a phrase, you can put question marks in too. But most of the time, if they're, um, it, that's usually helpful if it's a yes, no question. WH question is pretty obvious because you put the thing. So she by what? And again, that second index is optional. So we go through a whole bunch of others and take a look at how the structure set up. What did she do when she got home? What's the, what's the interesting thing about that? We had a timeline, right? So when she arrived home, that's time. And home is, so time location, arrive home. Um, what did she do? What's the sign for what did she do? Right? Do, 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 do. So she arrived home, what'd she do? Okay. And again, since this is all one story, or all one sequence, do we need woman here? They probably don't, right? Because the pronoun works. So we go through, there are nine questions, and I go through each of them. And then I've signed, I'm not done processing. So I've included a video of each question. But once you've gone through all of them and figured them out, then check to see how close it is to what I'm signing. Um, for noon, in the story, she does it, she mouths like the English of everything she's signing. So, um, Sometimes you'll see 12 for noon, right? Still sun up in the middle of the sky. Sometimes people sign 12, sometimes they don't. I only included the variation from the, uh, the video itself. There's a bunch. Uh, there's nine total questions. Here are the other ones. Then now it's time to see the story. Okay, so I wanted to figure out how you ask all the questions then watch the story itself. And she will walk through it. Um, I don't believe there's any additional 
vocab that we haven't already seen. If there are, you should be able to catch it through context clues. They should make sense. But I want you to particularly notice how she's acting things out. She will often describe something, then show it. That's how depiction works. Describe something, then show the action. That way, there's no ambiguity of what you're doing. And if you're consistent um, with the spatial relations and all, and your, and your information order, it will be very clear. No need to rush any of this if you're ever telling a story. Take your time. Better to be a little bit redundant and have the person go, okay, I got it, move on, than to zip by something and have someone go, wait, 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 did the dog come in or did the dog leave? So the dog in this story, I'm just saying. Okay, so now, next, answer. Now, she signs them in the story, so we don't need to talk about the answer. We don't need to figure out how would we sign it, because she already signs it. So I'm just going to blow through these. Then, um, there's some highlights of when she's in the kitchen doing her search to look at these things. Like, what's the transition to how does she get to the kitchen? This clip doesn't actually show that. It starts from her being in the kitchen. Um, but this is just generic text that they include. Notice how her spatial agreement when she turns one direction, when she turns the other. She's literally in the space. Okay, So she's acting it. The refrigerator is always in the same place. The, her office is always in the same place. The front door is in the same place. Then similar thing where she goes to the car to look to see if the sandwich fell out. Fell out, right? So it, it's kind of like if a person fell out, but now it's a thing. Fell out. And last, the bathroom. Maybe she left it when she set down the toilet paper in the, in the cabinet. So she also does an upper cabinet and a lower cabinet. And this is a subtle thing, but it's something to think about. When you open a cabinet, close the cabinet. When you open the refrigerator, close the refrigerator. That helps your audience, that helps the person you're signing to, um, uh, finalize, close out that thought. Um, We've all watched TV shows where the, someone walks into the house and they open the door, but they know they don't close the door, right? Um, Shazam, awful movie. There's one scene where the bad guy, uh, Mark Strom, I think, with the, the big eye, with the like glow in the dark eye, follows the, the, one of the kids back to the house. Never let Vicki Vale in the Batcave. He comes in the house, middle of winter, right? It's Christmas time, right? Comes in the house, but leaves the front door open behind him. Now the camera can't see it because the camera is kind of tracking him this way. But it's one of those things where in the back of my head, and I'm going, close the door. My, my mom's voice is going, close the door, close the door. I'm not paying to heat the outside, right? So those kind of things, try to not let your audience have those because those are what's going to distract from your story. So open, close it. If you open the refrigerator, close the refrigerator. If you open up the mill, uh, well, orange juice. You open up the orange juice, take a sip, put the cap back on, and then put it in, close up the refrigerator. Okay. So think about those things. Um, if you're watching a really skilled deaf storyteller, that's what they're going to do. They're going to give you a complete picture of something. And then we go, okay, now we're done with this. We can move on. Um, I know that sounds really nitpicky. But if you want to be a clear sign, those are the things where if you're doing your portfolio, the evaluator may never notice that you closed the cabinet doors. But in their mind, they went, oh, that's cool. Bonus points for that. They are signing very well. Okay. So those are the things that we're that I'm looking that I'm consciously looking for in there. Um, but I'm weird. I acknowledge those things because that's when you do theater, they're very directors tend to be very specific. Anyway, blah 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 blah. Um this slide goes back to the, the original concept of story structure, and it's using a storyboard. One of the ideas is to not think about, uh, to think about your activities as they happened, as opposed to the words you use to describe them. So um, you can do it this way if you're visual. The other way, um, it's hard to draw this stuff. I'm really bad at drawing. This is basically an outline. 
So one, make a list. Two, go to the store, buy things. Th you know, buy the eggs, buy the meat or cheese. I think it's cheese. Um, and going through each step. What was that first one? Bread. I can't tell. They're really tiny on my screen, but you can look at them. So come up with here's my list of things to buy, and then got home, put them in, put them away, went to work. So if you just write an outline, don't write full sentences. Just write the barest information you need to remember all the information that's in there. Um, then the body. So the first one's the background. Here's how we got to the point where lunch was a problem. Then she goes looking. Oh, it's not in the refrigerator, not in the car, not in the bathroom. My sand, my food's not in the bathroom. I don't know what, whatever. Um, so she makes something else, right? Something, sandwich, whatever. Goes back to work. Then ding, ding, or knock, knock, which I always find funny. There's a knock at the door. There's lots of references in this book to, I heard something. They announced my flight. Someone knocked at the door, but they don't make it deaf friendly like a light flash. I don't know if it's maybe because, oh, you guys are ASL3. By this point, they should know that you know what a door light is, right? So flash, flash, flash. Okay. So I go, newspaper, person, boy. Oh, staring at what was that? Goes to get the money and opens up her purse, and there is the sandwich. Okay. So those are, again, storyboard, just list bullet points, much better than trying to write a paragraph. Because what you'll do is you'll sign, look, oh, newspaper boy. Not because you know he came to the door and I went up and I'm with you. It's not my money. I want my $2. Anybody? Anybody? Better off dead? Maybe? No? Okay, fine. So then we're back to the new vocab. It occurred to me. It's kind of like the sign for disgusted or gross. And I was upset with myself. Um, cool. And then all the videos, which is the story. Um, so cool. That is everything for 1012. Um, it's just the last part of the story. Well, uh, I'll put some stuff up for the unit review and the vocab review but for the most part everything i've tried to incorporate in the slideshows and the lecture up till this point so that's 10 12 get ready for unit 11.